Right, so yes, you've read the title correctly. I have decided to begin from scratch with Desktop, the game. But before you hit unsubscribe, click the dislike button and close the video, I just want to ask you to watch the video and hopefully everything will be clear by the end of it. And you will understand why I made this very difficult decision. It all started about a day after I had released my third devlog. I was thinking of ideas for the game, just doing a bit of brainstorming, and I came up with a pretty incredible idea. I wanted to make a search engine and add tons of websites to our game. But this is where things started going wrong. This is where the ideas started getting too big. I called myself, for the first time in the development of this game, procrastinating. I was willingly not doing the work I needed to do for the game, instead focusing on small details. I lost motivation for this thing I had loved working on for such a long time. And that's when I started realizing something was wrong. But I didn't want to admit it. I didn't want to be stuck even though I knew I was. That's when I got this video in my recommended. It compares making a small game to pushing a rock up a hill and it explains how you can easily get demotivated or demoralized by making that hill a mountain. And that's when I truly realized I didn't have the top of the mountain in sight anymore. But the video also talks about how you control where the top is, how high your mountain is. And that's when I make the decision to start over. But of course, this doesn't mean we are just throwing away everything we've done so far. We're just going to have to look at this game from a different perspective. Let's start by dividing everything about the game we have made so far into two categories. Things that are fun and realistic, and things that keep me from finishing it. Let's start with everything that's fun and realistic. First, the setting. The game has to take place in a desktop. Second, the application Pokemon Things. We need applications coming alive. And third, the animator versus animation feel. It wasn't a direct inspiration for the game so far, but I think it could really use more of it moving forward. Right, so there are probably more things we are unconsciously going to keep, but these are all the things I wrote down. But these are just some things I wrote down. Now let's get to the things that kept me from finishing the game. First, the sheer size. It was just too big for my first game. Second, the fact that it wasn't going to be playable for a long time. This meant that I didn't really have a good idea of the progress I was making, and that is very demotivating. Third, the messiness and hard-coded nature of the code. The code just wasn't relative enough for the game size, and changing that code would take a very long time. Right, so now that we have a good idea of what we are keeping and what we really don't want in our game, we can now start working on a new version of our game. And this also means we are going to change the name to something a lot more fitting. Because let's be honest, Desktop the Game isn't the best name ever. So from now on, this game is going to be called Desktopia. You get it? Like Desktop, but like Desktopia. Also almost like Dystopia. Right, oh, I'll shut up now. Let's just start working on the game. The first thing I did was create a brand new Unity project, with of course our new name, Destopia. Then I started the process of importing all the assets I thought we might need into our brand new project. I also recreated the desktop we had in our previous game, but after I did that, it just didn't feel quite right. The point is to recreate a Windows desktop, but it just didn't really look like it. So I started designing a new background, which I really hoped would help. And this honestly took a really long time. Just getting the proportions right was already a huge challenge. But after a while, I got to a point where I was happy with it. So I imported it into the game, tweaked the proportions a bit, and changed the bar color to blue. All of this made it look a lot more like a desktop. Then just for fun, I added some windows to it to see how it would look, and I honestly love it. So in a couple of hours, we went from this to this, and I think it is a huge improvement. Right, so with the backgrounds finished, I can explain to you what kind of game this is going to be. A platformer, but also not really. All you need to know for now is that you control a character in the desktop world. And this is that character. Say hello to Luke. But Luke isn't just the player, he is also your companion. Which may sound a bit weird, but let me explain. 
You see, Luke can't move on his own. He needs you to do it for him. But what he can do is talk to you directly. He does that by not even acknowledging the existence of a fourth wall. He can also communicate with characters in the world. And he of course has knowledge and a slight power over this desktop world. Which means he can teach you everything there is to know and also change some simple things. Overall, he is just going to be a huge help in the gameplay while also being an important part of the story. Which by the way is something we're going to have in this game that we didn't really have in the last. And I think that's awesome because I love writing stories. Right, so with the backstory out of the way for Luke, let's put him into the game. And because my priorities are absolutely amazing, I started by making an animation. But what I should have thought about earlier is that I can't animate. So I just went on Google, found a walking cycle and traced over it. By the way, you can also see that the original design of Luke had a backpack, but I decided to get rid of it in the animation process. Right, let's see how this looks in the game. Honestly, that's not too bad, but let's try adding some movement. So the first thing I did was make sure that the right animation plays when you click the right button. I also implemented a system that flips him around to face the right way. Then I wrote a simple movement script using position and not velocity just because I want the movement to be very controlled and also I just realized while writing this script that I made a huge mistake. You see the speed is now partially controlled by the amount of frames you get and that's not what we want. So that'll be the first thing I fix next devlog, but for now we'll just ignore it. Right, so the movement is now working. Of course it doesn't at all line up with the animation and the speed is just ridiculous. So I spent some time working on that and now we have a pretty relaxed walk. Now I think we're ready to make a jump. And of course I started by making the animations because of the uh, priorities thing. So I searched for jump cycle on Google but I couldn't find one that fits our game. But then I took another look at the one we had been using and I realized that we could just use the running cycle for our jump. So I spent some time drawing over it and by the end we had a little jump animation. But we aren't exactly jumping yet. So I added some jumping force, which was by the way also done with positions. And now we've got a jump, but it doesn't feel quite right. So I decided to add another frame to the jumping animation and it already looks a lot better. Then I added something a bit subtle, but necessary. I don't know if you can see it, but I added sprint to the game. So now by pressing control, you can go slightly faster. Because sometimes walking extremely slow just isn't quite working. Right, so with walking and jumping working, we need somewhere we can walk and jump to. We need to add a pretty big world. I decided to do something relatively simple. I wrote a simple script that detects if the player has reached the end of the screen, and if they have, it moves the camera. But like I said, I really want a moving camera and not a teleporting camera, which is a bit of a challenge, at least for me, but after working on it for a while, I got this. And it may not look like much, but it means the code I wrote is working and it also means that I can tweak it really easily. So after a while of doing that, the game now has some pretty smooth looking camera movement. But because there isn't anything I've seen yet other than look, you can't really tell. So I added some temporary random green cubes and now I should be able to show you. You can now clearly see that the movement is fast, but also very smooth which is exactly what we want. Now there is just one more thing I want to add in this devlog, and that is being able to walk in the other direction. So I spent a little while coding, tweaking, and making sure the camera doesn't immediately move back again, and now we have it working. It's not the most stable system in the world, and it's definitely breakable, but it will do for now. And that is it for this devlog. I hope you forgive me for clicking reset on this game and starting from scratch, but I also hope you can see that this new game definitely has a lot of potential. Right, so if you aren't angry with me because of this decision, you might want to consider joining my Discord server. Yes, it is brand new, and no, I do not know how to manage a Discord server. So it will probably be a huge mess, but it will be my mess. And on a bit of a serious note, it's probably the best way for you to reach me and for me to reach all of you. Because my videos aren't very frequent and sometimes I just want to ask something and can't wait for the video to come out. So if you join my Discord, I would really appreciate it. Right, so with that said, thanks for watching. Make sure to like this video if you liked it. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.